Hi, my name is Pat Brush and I serve on the Broward Church Ministry staff. It's Mother's Day 2020 and during these quarantine times, many are finding new and creative ways to express their love and appreciation to their moms, even though they physically can't be together. Most moms like to be honored when their kids listen to their advice, but I'm speaking from personal experience. We would like to offer a series of devotionals that focus on one mother's advice to her son. This advice is delivered as the culmination of Proverbs, a whole book of the Bible devoted to wisdom, not just head knowledge wisdom, but it's the kind of knowledge that is meant to be acted upon, offered so that it will be consumed and lived out in sync with God's created order of things. Currently, our order of things has been turned upside down. We're staying safe by sheltering at home and flattening the curve. It's kind of like COVID-19 multitasking. We didn't even know what these terms meant a few months ago. The wisdom from a mother to her son describes a woman of noble character. It's found in Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. Let's start by reading verses 10 through 18. A wife of noble character who can find. She's worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She gets up while it's still dark and her lamp does not go out at night. She's a morning person and a night person. She can cook, she can sew, she actually wears what she sews and other people will wear it too. Although she's choosy about using the best materials, she's interested in new adventures, operating like a merchant ship that brings back delightful and exotic goods. She's a global citizen. Her business deals are profitable and she knows how to invest wisely. When she speaks, people listen because her life backs up what she says. She's a homemaker and she gives attention to the well-being of everyone in her household. Add to this the enviable fact that her children respect her. They even tell their friends about how they admire her and her husband praises her, knowing that their marriage and partnership brings him respect at home and in the community. I know, I'm thinking, stop it! I don't even want to hear anymore. Do we even want to read more about this Proverbs 31 woman? She slayed me at sewing. I don't know if I even like her. Um, but a good question is, are we meant to believe that the wife of noble character did all of these amazing things all of her life? We know that Proverbs 31 verses 10 through 31 is actually a poem, an acrostic or an alphabet poem where each line begins with a letter of the alphabet. Some scholars write that these verses are summarizing a fruitful and obedient walk with God through many different seasons of life. Like from A to Z, she lived a, a God-honoring life. Perhaps these highlights and faithful times show us a picture poem about how, about how learning the fear of God actually and practically impacts a family, a vocation, and a community. During these stressful times, I understand that many moms are both intrigued and distressed when they peer into the life of their online contemporaries. They see photos of a creative mom and clever mom making crafts with their kids from stuff that's just laying around the house. They watch videos of an energetic mom playing table games or doing uh, exercise routines with their children. 
They read blogs or Instagram posts from witty women who practically shout, you are enough. Focus on you. You do you. Right now, the entire world knows one thing. We really don't know what we're doing. At home with the ones we love the most, many moms can feel like they're failing at something that's really important. One commercial for Facebook portal lists all the new jobs that working from home moms now have. Home doesn't seem like much of a shelter for these moms. In reading about the Proverbs 31 woman, I'm asking moms to consider a nameless woman in an ancient culture from a passage of scripture and not be guilted out about how we don't measure up. I think we're meant to turn to her, particularly during times of trouble and uncertainty. Why do we find her in the very last chapter, a sort of summary in a book devoted to wisdom? What can we learn from her before we're intimidated by her? We can learn what it means to live in the fear of the Lord. Perhaps you're hoping to learn how she got her kids to say, thank you, mom. The whole book of Proverbs describes what it's like to live well in God's world. How did our friend in Proverbs 31 do life? Her husband summed it up this way. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. How did she surpass other capable and competent women? The writer states, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That's Proverbs 31, verse 30, the next to the last verse of the book. But Proverbs opens with this truth. If you wanna be good at life, you must start with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. That's Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. This kind of fear is a healthy sense of reverence and awe for God. It grounds us as we find our place in his universe. It means that I decide to walk in God's ways, his definition of right and wrong during the best and the worst times. Wisdom is an attribute of God, and I can access it if I start with the fear of the Lord. For most of us right now, this can seem like a cruel ask to fear God. We are having to face plenty of fears right now. Unemployment, unpaid bills, health concerns, and stress in our family. But the Bible promises that cultivating a reverence for God and awe of Him is the starting place for many daily decisions that impact others that I love and you love for good. And right now, these others are surrounding us at home 24-7. In the next few weeks, we will learn more from the Proverbs 31 woman. We'll take a deeper dive into her relationships, her work ethic, and how the fear of the Lord schooled her in wisdom. I hope you'll join us.